G'day everyone, yes it's finally here, the JV001G Barrel Grip XGT Jigsaw. It is a variable speed jigsaw running between 800 and 3500 strokes per minute. Now as I just spun that round, did you notice it has power buttons on the left and right hand side of the tool? Just like the 18 volt version. What else is the same and what is different between this and this? This is the DJV181, the brushless barrel grip. They're both of course brushless. This one made in the UK, the new 40 volt I see is made in China. My other D-handle jigsaws also made in the UK. This one also does 800 to 3500 strokes per minute. It has the same settings on the side here, the straight cut and then the three orbital modes. Same as the 40 volt, the area for putting in your bayonet style blades is the same. The dial on the back for your speed settings is in the same place. So all that so far is the same, but there is some slight differences. So let's take a look at what those are. If we have a look at the base of each model, we put them next to each other like so. You'll see the XGT is slightly longer. Let's put a bit of light on there, shall we? So the XGT coming in at about, not much, about half an inch longer, or maybe not even that, 10 mil-ish, 3 eighths of an inch longer than the 18 volt. They both have the Allen key in the back here for adjusting the angle on your base if you want to tilt your base. And the other thing I've noticed is the width in the hips here. So I'll just take this off so it's easier to maneuver. We can take a look at the 18 volt on the left, the 40 volt on the right. This is quite a bit thicker than it is here. So when you hold it, the 18 volt not quite as nice I find as the new 40 volts. Just that little bit slimmer, just makes it fit in your hand just that little bit better. So that's nice. But apart from that, they are, as far as I can tell, without turning them on, basically the same tool. I've got some vents in the front of the 18 volt one here that are not present in the 40 volt. Maybe that's to stop dust going in there, because the 40 volt should run a bit cooler than this and not need as much venting as the 18 volt models, in theory. Now let's just take a look at what the 40 volt comes with in the box. So, you get the tool, you get this removable plate there on the bottom. It comes with a splinter guard, which if you're anything like me, well, it will disappear off the face of the earth pretty quickly. Comes with a pack of five blades that are made in Japan. And it comes with a dust port, which is nice. Lots of tools often don't come with these sort of things. So, you pop that in there, or if you wish to have it on the other side, you spin your tool around, spin the nut around on the, I mean the screw on the end there, and poke it in that side. So it can be used either side, nice and easy, and you use this one, the old rubbery job, and poke that over the end, and you're good to go. So that's about all there is to that. Now, is it any difference in power to the 18 volt? I'm guessing it's pretty much not going to be. It's got the same specs. Oh, one more thing I need to talk about before we go any further. After the siren goes past. A lot of people were annoyed at some Makita jigsaws because they have an auto mode which would start off slow. Once you start cutting the timber or whatever, it would speed up. And if you take any pressure off, it slows down again. It was quite frustrating. Um, and you can turn it on and off on some models, but some of the earlier models you couldn't turn it on and off, and some of the models sold in certain countries you couldn't turn it on and off. So, you'll be pleased to know that straight out of the box, the factory setting for this has it turned off. Now, I'm assuming it's going to be like that everywhere, but it might not be. But hopefully, Makita have made all the 40 volt ones the same that you can turn it on or off. 
And to turn that on and off, make sure your tool is turned off. Put your dial on 1. It goes from 1 to 6, of course. Turn on the tool. Not running, just unlock it. Better put on a battery, eh? <laughs> put your battery on first. Unlock it. Thing flashes. Stick it down onto 6. Stick it back up to 1. Flashes again. Now... We should be on the soft load setting, I think. Turn it on. Yeah, that didn't sound full on. So let's undo that. So I will put it back onto one. Stick it on. Turn this to six and back to one. Flashy flash. Now, if we put this on six, it should go flat out. Ah, turned off. <laughs> Yeah, see, there you go. <laughs> Much more aggressive. So, that's how I would leave it set, so that I can control it myself. I don't want the tool trying to tell me how to cut. And I know a lot of you did not like that feature. But if you want that feature, you can turn it on, and it's pretty easy to turn on and off. Now, if you're fairly new to jigsaws and don't know the difference between a barrel grip and a top handle or D handle, I'll give you a quick rundown. This is a barrel grip. This is a top handle or D handle. As you can see, very different in shape. This one has a trigger. This one does not. So you have the on-off button. Once it's on, you don't have any control via a trigger. You can set the speed with the dial, but as you're going along, a bit more tricky to adjust than this. This one, you can just feather it with your finger and get it exactly how you want it. Slowly start, but ramp it up, and then back off towards the end of a cut, stuff like that. And that's one of the reasons I tend to prefer a top handle one like this over a barrel grip. But these are a bit more awkward in shape for different tasks. If you're cutting above your head, up walls, things like that, underneath a bench or a sheet good, this is much easier to hold because you can hold it on any angle you want and it doesn't matter because you don't have to touch a trigger. Now, some D handles now have variable speed and you can lock the trigger in a certain place and it'll behave roughly like a barrel grip. But this one, you cannot do that. It doesn't have variable speed, just variable speed in the trigger. And you can't actually lock this trigger on on this particular model. So, yeah, this is one of the first ones. It's brushed, but I like that jigsaw. So, you can use them for different purposes, basically. And this one you can sort of use two-handed as well. You can hold it like this if you wish. Whereas this one, your hands are in a slightly different place. You can hold it two-handed, of course, if you want. Have a hand around there, but it is different. This one you can also control just by this front, but if you want, it gives you a lot more options depending on how you want to hold a tool and depending on what your job is or whatever it is you happen to be doing. So that's why a lot of people like the barrel grips over the D handle or top handle because there are more options available to you. Now all these jigsaws that you've seen on the bench thus far, they are all rated to 135 millimeters. That is, they will cut, in theory, 135 millimeters deep in timber, which is extraordinarily deep for a jigsaw. And I don't know how often people do a cut that deep. That's pretty deep. But Let's go test these two out and see how they do cutting through 45 millimeter timber, which even that is pretty thick for what most people do with jigsaws. Now, if you're wondering what the difference between the straight cuts and the orbital functions are, basically use the straight cut when you want to do something fine. If you're cutting through thin metal or you're cutting laminates and things that you don't want to chip and you just want to slowly go along, then use the straight cut. If you want to whack through something quicker, then these orbital functions come into their own. If you stick it on that highest orbital function and you're cutting wood, you can quickly just, you know, if you want to just quickly rough something out. But by rough, you will get a rougher cut. It'll do it much quicker, but it won't be anywhere near as smooth and nice. So if you want nice finish at the front, and then these ones will give you slightly more orbitalization each time. And if you're doing aluminium and stuff, you can get away with, say, the first orbital mode. But, you know, the highest one... I would only use for rough cuts and timber. Now I'm going to run these on full whack, i.e. number six. I'm also putting them on full orbitalization. Got some new blades here, some of these jigsaw blades you might have seen me um, talk about on a previous video, that Oslo Tool Company blades. 
So I'm going to use those and we're going to cut through some 8x2. Let's see who can do it the quickest, see if there's any difference between the 18 and the 40 volt. Too easy. Okay, let me tell you what happened there. So you'll notice the 40 volt finished quicker, started the cut much faster. That's because the 18 volt here was on the auto mode. And it's on the auto mode because it's one of the ones you can't take off the auto mode. I tried it, but doesn't work. This is one of the older ones. So if you purchased one of the first versions of these before they changed it to be like what that one's like, then the auto is always on. You can't turn it on and off by doing the, the dial trick. And unfortunately, <laughs> this is one of those. So I will have to do the test again with this one also on the auto mode. Okay, so there we go. That's both of them on the soft start mode. So like I say, you need to check if you're gonna buy one of the 18 volt ones, check to make sure you can turn it on and off if that's something you wanna do. And I'm not sure, there'll be a, a serial number and a, and a date stamp for when that changeover was. Maybe I'll check it and find out before the end of the video, I don't know. So if you're in the shop, just put a battery on one before you buy it and just test to see if you can do it, see whether they've got the old ones or the new ones. And I've also had people say that in some countries even the supposed new ones don't do it either. So that's why I just showed you them both on soft. Now, how about we put it up against this one, the old brush top handle, and see if there's any major advantage or not with the 40 volt over this one. Well, as you saw, a bit of a thrashing. <laughs> This one is only 2,600 strokes per minute, 3,500, so 900 more than this, so it was always going to cut a bit quicker. The stroke length on this is 26 millimeters, which is the same as the 40 volt and the other 18 volt we've got here. Um, so it's not the stroke length that is making this one slower than this one, it's just the fact this can do an extra 900 passes in a minute, which makes it much quicker than this. Incidentally, this one has a max power output of 340 watts, that is, and this is 390 watts, and the 40 volt coming in at 700 watts, so continuously this will feel nicer under load because it's got the power to just keep the tool running, whereas the 18 volt one's more likely to bog down because this one's got just that extra bit of oomph to it. Although, to be honest, you don't notice it that much unless you are doing something pretty hardcore. And for those of you who want to know, it fits. Let's see just how good I am at following a line with this thing. On the money, piece of piss. Should have used a nicer blade, but. So, what I find with the dust extraction probably gets, probably gets about 50%, maybe a bit more, somewhere between 50 and 75% of the dust. Problem with the jigsaw, blades going up and down like this. So a lot of the dust automatically gets pulled up past the point where it's sucking. Because when this is hooked up, it's sucking. There's, there's a lot of suck going on there. But the dust doesn't end up going in the right direction to be caught, to be sucked up. But it's not, 
it's not bad it, it sucks up a fair bit um, the problem though is that you do have to of course have a big hose on it which sort of jigsaws you want high maneuverability and as soon as you put that hose on there your maneuverability goes out the window somewhat also it doesn't have AWS so it comes with the dust extraction port and everything but you can't turn on your vac with it so that's that's a little bit annoying and a little bit disappointing in a 40 volt tool you think by now they would just stick that on anything that creates dust like this it has a dust port for you to hook it up to a vac you think they would put AWS in it but alas no If you want to know the difference in the weights, well, the 18 volt one is slightly heavier. It's about 20 grams, so basically nothing in it. Now this jigsaw is rated to cut at 135 millimeters deep, which is deeper than this piece of wood, which is 125. Now that's something fairly hefty to try and cut through with a little jigsaw. I think you'd be much better suited with a reciprocating saw, or a chainsaw, or a circular saw if you're going to be cutting that deep. But perhaps rather than cutting through wood that deep, maybe you're cutting through some sort of composite panel you know like a cooler panel where you've got foam in the middle and then you've got aluminium or thin steel on the outside sandwiching that foam would be quite good for cutting that sort of stuff i suppose because 135 through timber is going to be a bit of a slow ride but of course if i did have a blade long enough on me i would be trying it One thing that's different with these models over the old brushed one I was showing you before is the way the blades go in. So on the 40 volt and the 18 volt barrel grip, grab your bayonet style blade and you just poke it in. Nice and easy if you can line it up. <laughs> so you just shove it in, bang, locked in place, ready to go. Whereas this one, the old 180, you can't do it because if you have a look at the opening here, the slot is going over to the left and right of that vertical slot there you need those to line up so to make it line up you do that shove your blade in and then release the I was pushing that by the way <laughs> but hard to see it's tricky to film some things and on the 40 volt here and the other 18 volt barrel grip if we release it, it fires out but not only that, if we have a look at the slot, the slots line up in the direction you want them to when the blade needs to go in there. So it's kind of like, and then spins the other way. So 90 degrees different to the other one. So that's nice. One-handed insertion, and when you release it, it fires it out. Just a little improvement over the old ones. If you want to do a beveled cut, take your allen key out of the back here, turn your tool over, and in the middle here you will see a allen screw, undo that. Once you've loosened the base, you can then tilt it to where you want. It has a couple of marks on here for 45, 30, and 22 and a half, I think. <laughs> so if you stick it over onto 45, you can then lock it. When you've got it loose like this as well, you can also move the whole thing back and forth depending on how you want to use your tool so you can get the blade closer to the front back depending on yeah, what you are doing. Once you've got it on the angle you want, do it up again 
and away you go. That's quite a slant. <laughs> So as you saw it cut no problem at all on a 45 degree angle through that 45 millimeter timber with a pretty old blade. It was really easy, it's, it's fairly smooth, that was on the highest orbital mode which is of course the most violent but it did it fairly well, I was more than happy with that. But you do have to be aware that I showed you earlier the um, 8 amp hour battery fitting, well once you have put this on a 45 degree there ain't no way you're using <laughs> that 8 amp hour battery because it's just going to crash. And it's the same with the 5 amp hour battery as well. So you've got to use a 2.5 or a 4 if you're going to tilt the base. Now as well as just doing freehand cuts, you can put a fence in here so that you can run it along the edge of a bit of timber or use a fence with a hole in it to do circles. Um, you can also run it on a guide rail with an adapter, although presumably if you've got a guide rail you've got something better to cut a straight line with than a jigsaw, because jigsaws aren't the greatest things in the world for cutting a straight line. You can use a circular saw blade much better than a jigsaw, but it is something that's possible and the adapters are available. So I like this tool, but there is one thing about it that I really do not like, and that's this. don't like having to do the reach around and find the button. I'd far rather just take my finger off a trigger like this one. With this old school D handle you have much greater control. You don't have to try and fiddle for a dial while you're cutting to change speed and you don't have to fiddle for a button when you want to stop. And you can be going flat out and then just ease it off before you pop out the other side so you don't blow out your timber. I much prefer that sort of control. Like that. Although I have to say <laughs> the um, barrel grip did a far nicer cut than that just did. So after I filmed that shot I saw that it was on <laughs> Orbital. Not on the straight cut, that's why this did not do as nice a cut because it was exactly the same blade so it should have been basically the same. Having said that though, I'm still more of a fan of D handles than barrel grips, okay? There, I said it. Let's get this going in the comments. Which do you prefer, the barrel grip designs or the top handle, D handle, whatever you want to call it design? Barrel, D handle, let me know down below. I just prefer having all the control at my fingertips, whereas with this, you don't have that. And when you want to stop, you've got to lean forward and try and touch that right at the right moment. And if you want to change the speed, you've got to be dialing with this while you're cutting. And it's just, I don't like that style. Okay, some people prefer that, I don't. But having said all that, of course, this is a very nice jigsaw to use and it is more comfortable to use than the 18 volt barrel grip. Low vibration, good comfort in the hand, plenty of power. And finally, you can all stop bugging me about it because this has been one of the most requested tools that I have reviewed on the XGT platform. And so now I know down in the comment section, what's it gonna be? I know exactly what it's going to be. It's going to be, where's the multi-tool? Where's the table saw? And the other one. I'm not even going to say the other one. <laughs> now remember, if you want to win one of these things, head on down to my Patreon page down there, up in the top corner. Sign up for that. And very shortly, I am going to be giving one of these away. 
not this one, not a used one, a brand new one, still in the box. So if you want to be one of the first in the world to get your hands on one of these, check out that Patreon link down there, and I'll see you guys on another one next week. Cheers, guys.